because we have victory in his name. But I just want to tell you just for a moment, trust me, I won't be long. I just want to tell you that my thoughts over the past few days, I was wrestling with God. Because I said, well, if we have victory in your name, didn't you hear us when we were praying? Didn't you see the people who were walking around my mom and dad's house like Jericho trying to make sure that they can knock down the walls of this cancer? Didn't you hear the prayers of, 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 of Bishop T.D. Jakes and Brian Carter and Antioch and Friendship West and Gateway in the village? Didn't you hear all of those prayers? Didn't you hear us? Where are you? Why didn't you do what we were asking of you? Because your word says... That if we abide in you and, and your word abides in us, then we could ask whatever we will and it will be given to us. Your word tells us that, that, that if we ask according to your will that you hear us. Your word is, is, is telling us that in Mark 11, if you pray believing, you will receive. To be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, make your request known. Where are you? I was wrestling with God the last few days. Because this was a great opportunity that we can tangibly see your glory. Everybody was praying, not only in Dallas, but around the country and around the world. People were watching. Where are you? This was an opportunity for us to see your glory. And as I was wrestling with God, he answered. And he said, number one, you don't understand the nature of my victory. Because just because I didn't answer your prayer your way doesn't mean that I haven't already answered your prayer anyway. Because victory was already given to your mom. You don't understand. Because of the victory that I have given you, there was always only two answers to your prayers. Either she was going to be healed or she was going to be healed. Either she was going to live or she was going to live. Either she was going to be with family or she was going to be with family. Either she was going to be well taken care of or she was going to be well taken care of. Victory belongs to me. Because of what I've already done for you, the two answers to your prayer are yes and yes. Because victory belongs to Jesus. Then he said to me, you need to understand that I am God and that I am sovereign and my game plan is bigger than any one player on my field. So you need to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And do not lean on you, but lean on me because I have the ability to make this crooked situation straight. I am the sovereign God. That's why they say that I am that I am. As high as the heavens are above the earth are my ways from your ways and my thoughts from your thoughts. We don't think the same. P.S. Don't tell me how to get my glory. (laughs) And finally, he just let me know. I appreciate your prayers and your trust in me. But the way that you're coming at me right now is with a sense of entitlement, like I owe you something. You can't tell me what I'm supposed to do. I'm God. You can't say, well, it should have been this way. You can't tell me, well, as much as she served you, you should have done it this way. As much as my dad has done in ministry and as much as we have done in ministry and how faithful this family is, it should be this way. 
don't come to me with that entitlement. Because without my victory and what I have done, all of you would be on the doorsteps of hell. I don't owe you anything. You owe me everything. And I know that it was hard for you to sit there and watch your mom die, but don't let that belittle the fact of how hard it was for me to watch my son die so she can live. So back up off me with your entitlement. There was always two answers to your question. Yes and yes. Because of my grace being sufficient. Thank you, Lord. I was able to take several steps back because I lost. <laughs> and simply just able to reflect on the fact that my mom was a great player on his team. The simple verse is one that my dad taught me, and he said, David served the purposes of God for the benefit of a generation, and then he fell asleep. Acts 13, 36, David served the purposes of God for his generation, and then he fell asleep. There's no better summary of life. And if you were to take out a pencil and a sheet of paper and in one sentence write your life summary, the question is, what would it say? I know that my mom's life summary was, Lois served the purposes of God. She was an imprint to her generation, and then she fell asleep. Every coach wants to know, are you following the game plan? I'll give this simple note. When I was playing football, my coach would always say, remember what's coming. Play in light of what's coming. You see, every player would take the field on Sunday when I was playing in the NFL thinking about Monday. We weren't thinking about Sunday. While we were playing, we were thinking about Monday. You know why? Because Monday is when you had to watch the film. Monday was accountability day. Monday, the head coach would pull down the screen, turn on the overhead projector, and pick up his red pointer and point you out. And he would say, sit down. All I want to know is if you were bearing the image of the logo that was on your helmet based on the playbook that you were given, if you were out there just doing your own thing. Don't answer that. We're about to watch it right now. <laughs> I want to make sure that we all know what my mom knew very well. That in all of our cases, one day the game will be over. And our coach, God the Father, is going to pull down his cosmic screen. He's going to turn on his Holy Ghost overhead projector and pick up his blood of Jesus red pointer, and he's going to have one question. He's going to want to know, were you living your life based on the uniform that I gave you in the sacrifice of my son based on the playbook, the word of God that's absolutely perfect that I have given you, or were you just out there doing your own thing? Don't answer that. We're about to watch it right now. That's why Ecclesiastes 7 says it's better to go to a funeral than it is a party because you get to consider whether you're writing a summary that matters or whether you're not. My mom would want me to let you know that if you're writing your summary and you don't like what it says and you're sitting here breathing right now, and you need to walk out these doors living in such a way that you rewrite it. Because every man and woman 
under the sound of my voice wants to hear what my mom has already heard. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. 